Welcome to episode six of the Jake's Take with Jacob Elishar podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Elishar, pop culture journalist and, and, and chief content creator of the Jake's Take website. Today, my guest is a friend of mine who I've known through Instagram. He is probably one of his generation's greatest minds when it comes to the entertainment industry. Please help me welcome Paul Kruger. Woo! Jacob, thanks for having me, man. Dude, it's an absolute privilege and an honor to be here with you today. Well, thank you so much. So, guys, for the background, Paul and I have been following each other on Instagram for years. Years. And we've been both been working on building our brands, and he has been fin- – and watching his brand take off is just phenomenal. He's been doing incredible work. Thanks so much, Jacob. I appreciate that, man. You know, it's been it's been a great journey. Awesome. So when did you get started in the entertainment industry or when did you have the idea to get into the industry? So I feel like it's sort of, I was 16 years old and, uh, a really like one of my best friends at the time, it was snowing outside and we had nothing to do. We were in the suburbs, nothing really to do. So we just picked up a camera and we had these really cheap, like $10 plastic snowboards. And we started to just like sled down his neighbor's lawns and we filmed it. And that was, we did that like all day. We edited the video, we put the song, Let the Good Times Roll by the Cars behind it. And it was just such a great experience. We were like, man, that was so fun, like let's keep filming. And then we just kept making video after video after video after video. And then I did be like, man, like, I, you know, I want to go to Hollywood. Like I want to go become like a Hollywood movie director. And that's, yeah. and that's, I think, that's what I think everybody wants to do is to be, is in our industry is definitely, we want to be, is like either work behind the scenes or in front of the scenes, like no matter what. Mm-hmm. And yeah. This, oh. So for me, it was uh, it was something where I definitely enjoyed like kind of directing and being behind the camera because I was the only one who was taking the initiative to like pick up the camera and roll it. And I, all my friends were totally down. They were like, "Yeah, like they will be in all these videos, like no problem at all." So that's that's where a lot of it started. And I feel like now that I've come to Los Angeles, there's been like I feel like what I had planned for myself was like was like this much, but then like what like the whole world had planned was like way bigger. And now I'm like in front of the camera and working in different departments and doing a lot of different stuff. So it's it's kind of more than I imagined, but it's really I'm really grateful for it. Alrighty, guys, just to let you know, Paul started in in Pennsylvania and basically, and he's definitely moved his way, way to Los Angeles. Like, that's similar to me, and I started in Kansas City and moved my way to New York City. So, if you have a dream and grab it, add it. So, that's one of our main things from our conversation, main lessons. Go ahead. So, basically... When you're as because I've seen him grow and where how he evolved as a director and screenwriter. So, Paul, I always want to ask you this question: Who are your heroes when it comes to the, the entertainment industry, and what did they make an impact on, and how did they make an impact on you? I think there's a lot of people, and that's a great question, Jacob. There's definitely a lot of people like when I would watch like movies with like Clooney and Brad Pitt and like Clint Eastwood. You're looking at this guy that's just so cool. And then also like Seth Rogen and, and Will Ferrell and, and also specifically like Judd Apatow with a lot of how Judd Apatow has his life structure around the entertainment industry where he's married to an actress who's who he makes films with. And then he also has two daughters who are now in the entertainment industry and they're in TV shows and movies, most likely because of his influence. But I feel like just like that type of like structure and that lifestyle, I'm like, that's really, really smart. He's got his own production company and he's doing all that stuff. And again, he's married to an actress who's in his movies and his daughters are now like really successful in the entertainment industry because of that. So that's really like a vision of what I want for my life as well. And I definitely see you having that and achieving all that. And. So let's talk about what was the driving factor to move from the East Coast to the West Coast. Sorry, can you repeat that? All right. So, what was the driving factor for you to move to to move to, from the East Coast to the West Coast? So I feel like 
there wasn't like a film scene in the East Coast, and the dream was always like, even from when I was like 16, like the dream was always go to the West Coast. For some reason, it seemed like Los Angeles just had the answers that I was looking for, and had everything I was looking for was in Los Angeles. It was very intuitive to be like, yeah, I just got to pick up and go to Los Angeles when I get the opportunity. It was that, and I feel like, especially with like filmmaking and entertainment, like it really is either Los Angeles or New York. And New York, like, for, for me, it was, like, a weather thing where I was, like, man, like, I was living in Philadelphia and the weather would get kind of rough, and I'm, like, I got to get to where the sun shines year-round, like, so it was always, like, a vision to get to Los Angeles, and I feel like it was just a matter of time before, like, the right opportunity arose to where I was, like, oh, this is how I can get there, you know? Awesome. So what have you been some of the challenges from going from, transitioning from, the East Coast to the West Coast while you've been in Los Angeles? The, the challenges is definitely being away from family. Like, I feel like being away from family is probably one of the most difficult things because it's like people you, you're used to seeing every day or always being around where you can, like, drive to see them or, you know, even if you're living with them, like, it's just so nice. But then being like a six hour plane ride away where it's like I'll see them like twice a year now, that's definitely tough. I feel like even, uh, I mean, in LA is a pretty expensive city. So in the beginning, like I was really like doing anything I could, like working any job I could or working like every day and any day that I could get work just to make sure I could like stay in the game and keep building my dreams. And, uh, and I even saw a lot of people who we lived with. We, at one point, we had a two-bedroom with, like, six people living here. But people just kept getting pulled out to sea because it was, like, for some people, it wasn't really the right choice or they weren't really here for the right reasons or they weren't working hard enough to actually stay in the game. And for me, what was really different was, like, I was very committed. I had a big why of why I wanted to be here. So I was very committed, and then that – led to me really doing whatever it took and working as hard as I could to just staying here and then keep building, even though it's, it's not always like sunshines and rainbows, like even though most of the time it is amazing, but I mean, there's definitely challenges to it. I feel like that makes it all worth the while though. And I agree with your assessment completely in that that's what you face in New York city, but like, but you could see, but however, for me, for me, all I have is transit. I can walk everywhere. But like the thing is with, you with New York, you also have the ability of with Los Angeles. You have the car, and then you have the four hundred five, and you have all these major highways and all these legendary traffic stuff. Because I was looking on Instagram when I was coming home from from coming home to th- New York through, and saw that huge traffic thing for Los Angeles. So I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, the LA traffic for me, like it was just like such an expectation that I'm not like concerned about it like even a lot of times driving to work takes like an hour but for me it's just part of like the expectation so and I always plan for it like it's only traffic in LA is only a problem if you're running late because then you're like well I'm not going to get there on time because there's traffic but if you leave early enough and you, you can afford to sit in traffic for a certain amount of time it's no big deal awesome so let's talk about the art of content creation both of us have very different structures of doing mine. I love written, and now I'm starting to do audio. But Paul is probably one of the masters of visual. So well, what goes thanks. through your? You're so welcome. So what goes through your mind when you come up with ideas when it comes to content creation? I feel like with content creation, I know everybody has their different styles. For me, I love like photo and video, and I feel like especially through like Instagram and YouTube. Those are like my two favorite platforms and Facebook. Like it's especially Instagram, such like a visual first platform where like people will see the photo. I feel like it's so important to get like good quality photos. And I think that's like, that's like a muscle that can be exercised, like taking good photos, like getting good angles, getting good lighting, figuring that out. So that's for definitely for Instagram, like using portrait mode if you have it on your iPhone. I feel like a lot of people I see are just like snapping like a blurry selfie and then like letting it roll. When, when we're even doing like what's a little bit uncomfortable is, is we'll be like, hey, can you take this photo? And then we'll like sit and like pose for like a photo. 
and then we'll upload that. But it works well because it's a, like a really good quality photo. And then with video, it's always been like there's always been like a vision for what the video, what I want the video to look like, or like a vision for the video. And then from there, it's just breaking it down to like what location does this need to be filmed at, like what what costumes do we need to film this thing, like you know what music do we envision having playing during the video. So it it always starts with a vision. I feel with video specifically. Photo is just the skill of taking good photos. That's in my experience. Absolutely. And here's the thing. I'd rather have good, and I, you brought up a good point regarding taking photos. I'd rather take a photo with somebody than not with a soft, than an awkward selfie. Yeah, yeah. I see tons of, yeah, exactly. But then there comes a time with, and when it comes to talking about using skin in that, it's like, it's very, like, I see a lot of influencers, topless and everything, and they get big likes but do you think it also is like saying oh wait a minute you're you're going you're like time out when it comes to content creation yeah i mean i feel like it's just something where everybody's got their own brand everybody's got their own unique style and for like there's girls who are do or who are crushing it posting pictures of themselves in bikinis and stuff like I think it's the same thing with guys who are like into fitness and they're just posting pictures of them shirtless and they're flexing and stuff. Like, look, if it's, there is like a market to it. So it's like, if you can, if we can appeal to the market to post photos that we know, like the market of Instagram will enjoy, I think that's absolutely a part of it. Not just posting to be like, Oh, well I really like this photo, but posting to be like, I really like this photo. And I feel like it fits into like the, into the, the whole system of, like, what performs well on Instagram, you know? Also, I, I definitely agree, because there are times I'd rather use Instagram stories than post on the computer, than post on Instagram, because the thing is, I'd rather tell a good audio story. Like, for example, this morning, I did a thing with Zucker's Bagels, where I showcased my favorite, ba- favorite Saturday breakfast, which is basically a lock and egg onion bagel, it with tomato with sun dried tomato cream cheese on a whole wheat everything bagel. I don't want, I don't post that because the thing is, I rather post with people that I admire or people who are personal in my life or maybe even famous friends who I see on occasion. Yeah, well, first of all, that sounds like a delicious bagel. So you guys send me your bagel recipe. <laughs> it's Zucker's bagels. Zucker's bagels. I gotta come to New York and and we'll we'll enjoy a nice bagel. Absolutely, and I also need to go to Los Angeles soon. But however, we got to get this conversation start back under control because the thing is, Instagram made headlines with an idea of taking away likes. So, what have you? What was your thought when you read that story? Well, I thought is I feel like I would just start throwing more content on Instagram without likes because it's like there is definitely a part of it where you post and you want to be like, oh, like I want this photo to do well. I don't want to just post a photo and it gets like zero likes, like. So there's that. It would kind of remove that like insecurity of being like, oh, like how many likes am I getting, which is cool. But I think for people like for for more of like the brand deal side of it and like the business side of it, like you can't really tell whose audience is like really engaged unless you look at their comments. But like the likes help to show like who's interacting, who's engaging with the people's posts. And especially if I feel like if I was a company and I was looking to like sponsor influencers on Instagram, like it would help to know what their engagement numbers were when it comes to likes and comments. So from like the business side of Instagram, I I think it's good to have likes because you can measure people's engagement and how active their audience is, which is good if you're trying to like sell a product or promote a movie or something. But then it's also good from like a personal standpoint because I feel like, you know, people would be most likely posting more like authentic content or use that word like they'll just be posting more like natural organic content because they won't be worried about oh i need to show my butt in this photo so i get likes you know what i mean yeah i ra- i agree i rather have authentic moments i don't care if it's with my family or with my friends i just want to like that's a big difference between a live caster and an influencer and we know some people are pretty crushing it when it comes to influencers and also leading the way, including our mutual friend, Thomas Messon. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, Tom's really helped me grow my page a lot. He's awesome. I feel like it's because it's like his thing is like social media marketing. 